Uh, so we just got back from King of the Hammers, and I wanted to give you guys sort of a, a slight post-mortem of how the trailer worked. Uh, and I say post-mortem because that probably is the worst camping experience of my entire life. Uh, but to be fair, it had nothing to do with the trailer or the Jeep or anything like that. It was mostly weather related. Uh, the wind was crazy, uh, and of course it rained almost solid one day. Um, so not very conducive to an overland experience event. Uh, but nonetheless, the trailer did amazing, and I kind of want to talk to you guys through some of the things that were good about it. We just wanted to uh, prove it's not a pavement princess. <laughs> yeah, so, so this, and that's another good point. So this was the first actual real camping trip with one of our trailers. We put a bunch of road miles on previous designs, and we've taken them to events and things like that for quite a while, for almost a year now, actually. But this was the first time that we literally just like packed it like crazy and took it on an event and stayed out in it uh, for several days. So uh, to, to cut to the chase, I could not be happier with how this thing performed. Like we have some pretty high freeway speed limits around here. So like 80, 85 miles per hour down the freeway is fine. That's for the slow people though. That's, that's for the legal people, Carter. We like to follow the law on video. But when I was towing this, like even over the rough stuff down the freeway at, you know, 80 plus, like this thing was straight as an arrow behind the Jeep. And I really didn't expect that. If, if you see the way this thing is packed, like it's not super low. There, there's some weight up top. Now, not a whole lot, but you do have, you know, three fuel cans up there, a diesel, uh, a premix for the Kawasaki and a premix for the uh, KTM. So there is some weight up there. And I, I was super happy with how this thing performed and, and not just that, but the ability to, to put weight up there. Traditionally, we would always have a rooftop tent up there, but this roof rack changes things. It gives you a lot more freedom of how you want to pack your trailer. So, uh, again, super happy with performance. Uh, and even off-road, it was really, really good. Now, I didn't, I didn't intentionally beat the crap out of it, but I, I probably went faster through the desert than most people would with their own stuff just because I was curious if we were going to see a failing point or a potential place for improvement with a trailer. But honestly, we're not gonna change a thing. This thing was absolutely perfect on the road and off road. Uh, I have no structural feature changes at all to do for the trailer. Uh, so we already have uh, a frame that was sent off to Two Blazer. So we should have that back this week. Uh, from that, we'll build our jigs and then start production on this. So. This trip was really good in the fact that it sort of solidified all of our plans and no changes really came out of the trip at all. So pretty happy with all that. So can you kind of walk us through the setup that you have going on right now? Yeah, so, so what, what this is, for this trip we added a reinforcement for the tongue. Uh, I think the original one would have been fine, but this one is, uh, how we say, more better than what it was before. More better, more so better. I also added our safety chains here which uh, was something we've been kind of playing with for a long time. And this design won out from all of the others. And uh, really, really happy with that as well. So good there. Um, I also moved our jack. So previously we had mounted it to the tongue here. The problem with that is if you do need to shorten the trailer, either to meet a, a length requirement or even just because you can, having the jack on the tongue was a pain in the butt. So. We moved it over here and that worked out great. It's a good height, uh, that, was, that was good. Uh, this is our normal tongue box. This will be an option on all the trailer build outs. Uh, this is the spare for the Wrangler, which this is actually a 38. On the trailer right now, we have 37s. Uh, my thought was the trailer would be fine with an uh, off balance 37 to 38 tire size. The, the Wrangler would be less happy with a misbalanced tire size. So that's why we went 38 here instead of 37 on the trailer. Uh, and, and you could definitely carry a spare on the back, but with this much weight, we really wanted to keep the weight on the trailer. Uh, spare tire platform. Uh, this is what we are set up for two dirt bikes. Uh, so basically all this stuff that you see here under the trace, that all bolts on. So there's no holes to drill or anything like that if you want to mount the dirt bikes on the trailer. So you uh, kind of go into depth about the yeah, so it's, what it, the space is. So show over here, you can see sort of the structure under here. Uh, all of this here, which is a little hard to tell, but basically all four of these triangular braces bolt on. And once you put those together with the ramp, 
everything sort of triangulates and becomes really, really taut and really square. So this whole space here, uh, so from these four mounting bolts here to these four bolts here, this is what we're calling flex space. So we'll have a few different sizes of that. Uh, this I think will be primarily what everybody will want, uh, strictly because it gives you the most room to mount things. So we'll have a bunch of different accessories that can go here, uh, not just dirt bikes, but we've got a big storage box drawn up that's a, about this high. It has a door that opens from the side instead of from the top like a normal truck tool box or something like that. So with that door that opens from the side, we'll be able to slide out either a big tray to store, you know, extra food, a generator, batteries, your fridge, your kitchen, you know, the sky's kind of the limit with that. But the idea is a, a big sealed enclosure that fills that space uh, with a mounting surface on top. So we'll have lots of ways to secure cargo down to the top of that box as well. Uh, then moving backwards, obviously this is a gladiator bed. You'll be able to buy brackets for Tacoma, Ranger, uh, even up to possibly a next size up chassis for F-150, 250, Ram, that type of thing. Uh, all those brackets bolt on, so there's nothing that you have to do to change, say, from a glider bed to a Tacoma bed, or even to our flatbed kit. So that's nothing we'll have to replace the stock bed will be a flatbed kit. And we don't want you guys to have to drill holes in the chassis and stuff like that. So all of those options for the beds or flatbed will be bolt on. Uh, on top of here, we have our Gladiator LBE, load-bearing enclosure. Uh, this was a really good test of this one too, just because of how crappy the weather was. And it kept everything out. So super windy, blowing sand everywhere, rain everywhere. Really happy with the ceiling of that. That's definitely not airtight, uh, mostly because the bed has tons of holes all in it. So if, if you guys want to really uh, get peculiar about that and stop up all those hole, holes, you'll be able to do that. There are a few things like your little seams right here where if you wanted to get really, really tight with it, you could just drop a little drop of silicone down in, in holes like that. So, But there's uh, rubber foam at all of these seams here and on the bed. So the things that we provide are really, really well sealed. Uh, the bed, not so much. But that'll be up to you guys. So, uh, And then we have our new, what we're calling roof basket on here. Uh, this is probably my favorite thing that came of, of this new configuration. Uh, mostly because it gave you so much flexibility with how you'd want to strap down your cargo. So that turned out really well and was... Um, obviously, we had tons of extra room that, you know, we could have put stuff if we needed to. Uh, we just didn't need to. Uh, then on the side here, we have the overlanding version of the Gazelle tent, uh, which absolutely failed miserably for some reason. Uh, this was a brand new tent that I took the wrapper off at King of the Hammers. Uh, it was mostly garbage. So I don't know why my other Gazelle tent, I love it. I've had it for three years and we use it all the time. Uh, this one's probably going to go back in hopes that the next one is not like this one, but uh, that's a different story. Still, still really like the tents. This particular one just uh, is, is got on my nerves. So, uh, Looking into the back, the only real failure that, that I had on this trip is my diesel heater leaked diesel everywhere. So if you guys can tell... Unfortunately, you can't smell the diesel smell that we smell right now. Probably smell it through the camera. Yeah, how smell thick of, it is. smell of vision. Um, I don't really know why. We'll have to tear the heater apart and figure out what went wrong. But it wasn't even cold enough to use the heater, so uh, I got a diesel bath for free. We used the Blackstone a little bit, but the wind was blowing so hard that it wouldn't heat the griddle up enough to really even cook. So that was a bummer. Uh, we didn't use the pizza oven because uh, the weather sucked. So, so we really just starved the whole weekend. We didn't even buy food. So, uh, yeah, but all this was great. Uh, you can see it. There's nothing dusty back here. Nothing's full of water or anything like that. So. Uh, everything in the Wrangler was fine, uh, but there's... We've put a lot of miles on this setup, so I, I expected all of that to work well. Uh, the rear seat delete was pretty nice. Um, one thing I did want to maybe touch on a little bit is 
when we first did this design, and we haven't cleaned anything up, so you guys get to see it exactly like it was. But, um, except for the 48 duffel bags my son decided he needed for some reason. Um, but one thing I did want to talk about, we had a lot of people that were like really adamant about adding these, these side plates here. Um, and I wasn't a real big fan of that when people wanted to do it. And I'm even less of a fan of it now because if you think about how we had this thing packed, it was, there were duffel bags up to like the back of the seats with lots of things that I feel like we didn't need, but nonetheless, they were in there. And if you had to unpack all that stuff to get to your gear in this door, that's not a great situation. So our seat delete is a little different than some of the others on the market. We don't need this vertical panel for support for that platform. So without that on there, uh, I'm able to get in here and get out. This is all of our air, uh, air up, air down tools. So you can pull that pretty easy. Uh, extension cord for the solar blanket, get to it pretty easy. And so without that side panel there, you can get access to this uh, really quick. So I think a little bit of this is just us uh, showing this in use and why you might or might not want that panel. Um, but I see no reason to have that panel based on how we're using it. I'm sure there's some other reasons you might want it. Uh, but these are just held on with little thumb screws. So when I did need access to it, take off three thumb screws and, and there you can get right into your stuff. So, so that was good. Inverter, all the wiring, auxiliary battery was perfect. We ran Starlink a lot during the day. Uh, so that turned out great. Uh, I think that's about it. I don't... Other than that, all of this is sort of standard, but the big takeaway that made me really excited about the trip is we were four and a half, five hours out to King of the Hammers and then probably another 30 to 45 minutes to get out to the event site from Johnson Valley. So we're probably, you know, roughly five and a half hours of out there in back time with the trailer, an hour of that being in the dirt through the desert, uh, through the crappy Johnson Valley desert, so not even a nice desert. Uh, and this thing performed flawlessly. I could not be happier with it. So, uh, yeah, that was really reassuring that we've we finally put together the perfect package. And this is pretty much version like four of this layout. And with each time, it's gotten a little bit longer, a little bit different weight balance uh, and things like that. But this is definitely where it needs to be. Super happy with how it turned out.